what's up everybody, my name is Trophy the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We just defeated a bunch, a bunch of Skellige Raiders uh, led by a fellow yeah, named Lippy so Gutmund. Right. It appears Nilfgaard well, here we go. turned its forces towards the capital. We're likely to encounter no more than pathfinders and foragers. So I hope. Okay, yeah indeed, so we hope. I can't actually get into this area, so let's just look around. Seems like this is a Rivian encampment. At least the Northern Realms encampment, so we should be fine. Uh, ooh, there are more supplies over there. Let's check the marker. There we go, fast travel enabled. And let's check this camp of ours. Anybody who wants to talk to us here? No, just a bit of, uh, bit of supplies. Okay then. And then to the south we have this little village. So let's check out the notice board. That gives us another puzzle over here. And we have a large plot of land to the uh, west we still need to discover. Uh, before we actually turn around and go towards what I suppose is the capital. Um, but let's talk to this guy first. The Nilfgaardian invasion necessitated certain steps. Neve had dispatched scrolls to her garrison commanders, based upon which they were to announce general musters. She'd hoped that by the time she reached Crydam, fresh recruits would be waiting to join her growing force. Alas, the commander of this fort, one Sergeant Griggs, had only bad news. Your Majesty, I've not the numbers to man the walls even. The call to arms brings few new recruits and more men desert each day. Folk are terrified something awful. They don't believe in victory. Okay, we just defeated a lot of Nilf Guardians, though. Make a speech, offer more soldiers pay, or press the townsmen into service. I think because of our recent victories, we might actually be able to convince the people by just making a speech. So they here we don't go. believe in victory? The queen rose from behind the table, toppling her chair. Then let them hear how I smashed the blackclads at Dravagrad. Quick as can be, the commander gathered all Crydam's inhabitants in the central square. Meave stepped out in front of the crowd and recounted her most recent victory. The folk of Crydam listened with bated breath. And so, we must stand together, fight arm in arm, be a wall. A wall against which black-clad hordes will be dashed! Okay, there we go! The townsfolk responded with thunderous applause, yet enthusiasm is rarely long-lived. That born of Meave's fiery words had dispersed after but a few days. No new volunteers joined the garrison, and the townsfolk hid from Sergeant Griggs to avoid being pressed into service. Neither the towns nor the Queen's own company were reinforced, and Meave left Crydam angry as a wasp. Okay, so that was clearly the wrong option. God damn it, we did get morale. We did get morale from that, so that's something at least. You see the dregs I got to endure the press. Yellow-bellied cowards and shirkers, that's who. You know no what? Will. Just join the army now. It's the common folk. No will, no spirit at all. No will to. Okay, so nothing else from this guy. That is sad. So next time I shouldn't be too afraid to spend resources, because uh, that's probably the best way to convince people. Just uh, paying them off, paying them off. Not the best message to send, but there we have it. So let's head west. Let's see what we can find over here, because there was a puzzle out here somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's uh, yep, yeah, that's an elemental. Let's check out the resources first, and let's smack our faces into this guy. Hard as a rock, according to legend, a mage by the name of Cornelius the White once lived in Crydom. Following a conflict with town elders, he was forced to escape with haste. Before fleeing, however, he first hid his entire fortune in a nearby crevasse. Aware other residents would seek the treasure for themselves, he, he had dared not leave it without a guardian. Eliminate all foes. So a puzzle, special rules, shortened battle and a custom deck. So there we go. Typical puzzle, we have a fixed amount of cards, eliminate all foes, and the enemy has passed. Okay. If there are three or more copies of this unit, combine them into a lesser DAO. 
So I need to destroy as much as I can. So let's start off with the Wagenberg. We have Reynard. So Wagenberg first, I suppose. Then end the turn. Then use Lyrian Arbalest to damage that rock by one. And then we get three. Oh, two rocks. So let's use the Wagenberg now. Get rid of those two rocks. And then we get four rocks and we get a lesser Dao. So all the rocks are gone now, so we can't do anything else but add, well, destroy rocks. So that means we should probably use the war wagon first. You can try to win them all, but you Because the death wish on the light infantry allows us to do five damage. So if we end the turn and use a forager to destroy one of those, he damages that. And we get two new ones. Then we end the turn. If you use Reynard now. Put him on we the same row. I can actually do five. Because yeah. I can do five damage with the Wagenberg. But it's. Yeah okay. There we go. I think that's fine right. What does this. After two turns on turn start destroy all enemies. Oh, the fur binoculars. That means I should just use the Lady Arblast, I suppose? Because the Death One Wish is going to kill the Dao. Right? There we go. Yeah, okay. Wasn't that hard. I could actually. I still had another Forager left. But, uh, there we go. Easy does it, I suppose. The Morana Runestone. So let's claim that. I'm gonna have to check out because I got a card from the Skelligers as well. He didn't have that much treasure actually, this guy. Or wait, the crevasse. I saw a crevasse on the map, didn't I? So that's... isn't it this thing then? This looks like the place. Um, but we'll just move on for now. I'm just gonna check out the command tent. So I can't equip more than those trinkets than those three trinkets and we got a few new things so the marana runestone heal all allies and boost them by two and the murderum bear transforms a damaged unit into a bear what does that do a bear has 22 health might be cool especially if it's a really really damaged one but healing and boosting them by 2 also gives us 20 without having the prerequisite of having a damaged bear. So let's just use the, the Morana runestone. There we go. If we get another place for another trinket, we'll be able to use the, the Murderum. Because it is really powerful if we manage to pull that off. But situational at best. There we go. I don't think the workshop has anything new. No, so let's just move on. So another question mark right outside the village. A contract on a monster. Interesting. Okay, a contract on a monster. Interesting. Might just be that we just killed that monster, but uh, never mind. A dragon. A live one. Seen it with my own eyes. A dragon. Yeah, I can we see it down there in the south. A, a dragon. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Let's just check that out then. Just want to pause this guy, see if there's anything over here, but it doesn't seem like it. So let's, uh, let's fight that wyvern over there, because this is a wyvern, I think. This really looks like a wyvern. Game is saving, so it probably thinks I'm going to lose this, but here we go. The Serpent of Foregate, the wyvern that prowled the fields of Foregate, was first spotted by Melek, a local halfwit. He had been busy carving obscene words into a birch stump by the roadside when the dragonet suddenly pierced the clouds above him. After hastily and ineffectually cleaning his soiled trousers with a fern leaf, he rushed to the village to warn the others of the vicious beast's presence. Kill the wyvern, if there are no cows left, you lose the battle. So again, a puzzle battle. Uh, and we need to protect some cows, apparently. Okay, so no cows are left. And it doesn't seem like the enemy has cards. So every two turns on turn starts, consume a random cow. 
Okay. Oh, I need to be careful because, of course, the Wagenberg does damage on the entire row. So I could try and get around this. Just put a Wagenberg down. And end the turn. Put another Wagenberg down and end the turn. Then use the War Wagon to get the infantry up. Oh, that is interesting. What if I use my own Wagenbergs on an enemy row? No, I can't use those. Because these guys also do 5 damage if they die. So let's see. If I use the tree one on the row now, I keep the cows alive. There we go. And keep them l low level as well. So if I use the Lyrian Arbalest after that, we'll see. We'll see how far we get. So we could use the Arbalest. That gives us six. And those guys, five. And the turn. I think I might not be able to do this. Although I could use... I can actually do that on my own row. So that gives us a s two... That's... And then we can use Rainer to add another the charge to the Wagenberg. And the turn. But we don't have enough damage now. No, we don't have enough damage. Let's try that again. So, I think our first idea was good. So let's just put the Wagenberg down. Then use the War Wagon to get ourselves the tree. Can't take it and use the Wagenberg to damage the cows on the front row, so they all have one health. Which means that the Wyvern will only consume... Ah, crap. Okay, he's consuming the ones next to him. It's going for the higher ones, of course. Then use the Lyrian Arbalest over here. You know what? I don't need... I think I can actually use Rainer to just give another charge. We trust each other. So we maximize our damage here. Then use the three Wagenberg on this row. Our own Wagenberg on this row. Oh, come on. Yeah, okay. So let's try this. Let's put two, two Wagenbergs down immediately. Then use the War Wagon. You can try to win them all, but you won't. To boost that. We get three on these. And four on this. So we destroy most of the cows. And then we end the turn. Then we use Reynard first. Company, forward march! End the turn. Use the Lyrian Arbalest on the Wyvern. End the turn. And use another Lyrian Arbalest. On the wyvern and then hopefully kill the wyvern first. Yeah, there we go. Ah, we killed the cow as well. What happens now? Oh, we won. Okay. Well, I guess we won. We kind of... That was a lucky one. It was all about luck because the wyvern randomly consumed cows and we randomly destroyed enemies with... Yeah, okay, never mind. We won. I'm not going to question this any longer. We uh, defeated that puzzle. And there we have another letter. Few remedies exist for a man who has lost his youthful vigor. The recommended solution is a simple mixture of raw dragon egg, a sprinkle of sugar, and a splash of pepper vodka. Should no dragon eggs be readily available, instead boil the liver of a cockatrice after first massaging in a blend of Zaraganian spices. I think that was kind of bullshit. But there we go, more supplies for us, and that seems to be it for this little area. So another puzzle done. Something's wrong at Abbot's Ravine. Ooh, what's Things wrong? Screams at first. How all's gone silent. Why okay. do the gods punish us so? To be cast out by Nilfgaard. And now to face beasts. Night on the eye road, a day afore last, claim the beasts called a girly Cora or some such. A Why girly Cora. A girly Cora. Um that's Probably not what he meant. Let's take a look over here. Grab this. 
And we have this man who has a question. Milady, the hovel's resident, a peasant by name of Bogan, has word for you. He claims he saw someone under cover of night bury some sort of treasure near the orchard. For a small sum, he's offered to sketch a map of where to look. Very well, pay what he's asked. There we go. Ah, uh, that is... okay. Okay. So right next to Lumberyard. It's probably pretty close to where we are right now. So there's the orchard. We got more troops from this thing. And we just surpassed 100. Holmdike. Holmdike. And these people are also in a bit of a trouble. But there we go. Look at this. This is where we needed to get the treasure. Right? Yeah, there we go. Dig that up. Open that up. And we get another... Avatar, so congratulations, we get the Ache of the Nasal, I think, that uh, Avatar is. It's a character from one of the short stories in the second book, if I recall correctly. And as this comes up uh, a bit more, I'll definitely tell the story, because it's a really cool story involving dragons and the like. And then let's have a little chat with these two people arguing. As Meave and company traversed the ruddy meadows, strident voices reached their ears. I beg your pardon. I've heard enough. A duel. I challenge you to a duel. A duel? Nonsense. I'd sooner lay you across my lap and give your ass a thorough flailing, you scoundrel. The Queen approached the arguing parties. Two nobles, Lords Cartwright and Mansfield. Quickly, she ascertained they were up in arms over ownership of an orchard lying between their estates. Assisting both nobles, their kinsmen, armed to the teeth, prepared to leap at each other and crush heads. Upon spotting Meave, the lords lowered their voices, bowed and presented themselves. Yet they could not keep their ire fettered long and were soon casting aspersions again. Y your Grace, Mansfield has seized it. No, no, stolen my land. Land that has been in my family for generations. It is my recompense for your reckless deeds. To burn down me mill in Furchin for a bit of sawdust in your flour? Well, I never. A bit? A bit? Oh, let me at him. Farman's taken ill, cook's feverish, all from that manure. You are a fraud, sir. A fraud and a thief. Still doesn't give you the reason to burn down his, uh, his mill. Though she faced the not at all trifling matter of the Nilfgaardian invasion, Meave agreed to settle the dispute. Reynard, who knew the history of every Lyrian and Rivian family seven generations back, served as her advisor. No doubt I would find for the Cartwrights. They are in the right here as regards the title to the land. Yet your grace must consider. The Mansfields have ever served the crown and never delayed payment of tribute. Whereas the Cartwrights... The Cartwrights are litigious charlatans who owe the royal treasury thousands, many thousands. Okay, so now we have all the information. So we could either go for the Cartwrights who are technically entitled to their land, but of course they're, well, they're clearly criminals. They just burned down the man's, the Mansfield's uh, mill. Uh, order the orchard to be divided. That seems like the, the cocky way out, the, the coward's way out. So I think we're going to grant the orchard to Mansfield because A, his mill was burned down by the Cartwrights and B, they're going to probably pay us a lot better. So let's just grant Mansfield the orchard. The orchard must go to the vassal unburdened by debt. This is what I prefer, said Meave. Thus I declare it Mansfield's. But the law clearly says... I am the law, Cartwright. Lord Cartwright moved to debate the matter further but a snort from Reynard reminded him he stood before his liege. Mansfield, content, made an ample contribution to bolster Meave's force and the realm's defense. There we go. So... We decided in favor of Mansfield. Hopefully that doesn't come and bite us in the ass later. But, uh... Yeah, moving back to the south. So I went back a bit because I still have that one treasure map that we never actually used. And I think it's supposed to be around here somewhere. Feels like it actually should be around this shack. Although there seems to be someone here in need. 
Your grace, a merchant has propo a proposal that may be of interest. In the face of war, he's decided to close shop and has offered to give us all his remaining goods. In return, he requests a few of your men escort him to the nearest town. That seems good. Yeah, and we get a card piece for that as well. There we go. Part of the Dimeridium bomb. Something I missed, apparently. And then there's at least something over there. There's a bit more stuff over here, but this is the place where I got the treasure map in the first place. So if the treasure is buried somewhere, it should be around here. Ah, apparently we did already find it right now, so never mind. We just uh, cleared up that bit and we can move back to where we were. So the only place here we haven't checked out just yet is this area. Seems like a herbalist shack or something like that. So let's talk to her. Your grace in the cottage lives in the herbalist, there we go, whom the local peasants hold in high regard. Her potions and ointments have healed many wounds, saved many lives. Do you wish to procure remedies from her stock? Of course, we have plenty of money. And there we go, the Dimeridium Bomb discard is now complete. Let's check it out immediately. So Dimeridium Bomb, restore all enemy units to their base power. Interesting. Might be very powerful. Maybe even more powerful than a Murana runestone. You know what? We're gonna swap that out. We're gonna use the Dimeridium Bomb instead of the Murana runestone and we'll see how we'll fare with that. I think later on we'll be able to equip even more trinkets, but for now the limit is three. So we're kind of stuck to that and I do like the Lyrian Merlot and the uh, Commander's Horn, the Lyrian Horn. So now with that done, we should be able to go south. And there we go. Something's happening on the bridge. Because we're getting close to the capital. On their way to the capital, Meave and company happened one fine day upon a lone rider. Had I been at her side, I would immediately have recognized his passionate gaze and altogether chivalrous mien. Identify yourself, sir. And your Ooh, intent. there he is. There he is, that's Ake. Ake. Nell, I am dubbed. The Nell. And my design I never conceal. Ake of the Nell. So I'm gonna tell the story later on. A good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man. And we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here. Drowners, ghouls, Look at their faces. And kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the gods' help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil and facing it in mortal combat. Who do we spy? A knight errant? Hmm. Just as likely a madman. Okay, so, um... Godspeed, Ake of the Nail. The Nail? The Nail? The Nail? The Nail? He said it, but yeah. The care you show for my folk I greatly appreciate, Sir Ake of the Nail. Godspeed. And to you, your majesty. So let's stay friendly, because he's, of course, a formidable knight. Wait, did that just tell him to fuck off, or what was that? Wait, what about the rest? What the hell just happened? Don't speak... I mean... What? Did that just tell him to fuck off? Not a scrap. Not oh, a damn. I think I might have just missed a big Blood part of this. left behind. Oh, uh, why that that was not clear at all that I was just gonna tell him to fuck off like that. Oh, come on. Okay, yeah. Fair enough. That was probably my own fault. I thought I was just being friendly with that. Godspeed, he was he's a really religious man if you've read the books. Why the hell? Ah, uh, this this hurts. I was hoping we were gonna be able to talk to him more even after that, but that was just That was ridiculous! Just one big grave now. Can I just... No, the last save is actually after the conversation. For fuck's sake, no. Ah, oh, that is annoying. So yeah, I didn't think that would just blatantly end the conversation there. God damn it. I think I just lost Not a possible a companion. Nothing damn. Okay. Okay. This hurts a lot. But um, let's just head into this vile bit of whatever the hell this is. And check out the, the cave. No? No cave? What? There's a giant dark cave in here and there's nothing... 
Ah, oh, this is bullshit. Come on. Do I need to talk village. to this man further? Just one big grave now. Hallowed, mother. Look upon these stricken souls what suffered evil. Protect, console, a whole village. Just one big... Okay, let's check out the map. So yeah, apparently there's nothing over there. That is weird. Probably something that was tied to ache. Ah, oh, come on. And there's no way to revert any of my saves. So, um, I'm fucked on that account. Okay then, with that done, I'm gonna take a little break then. If I'm able to somehow recover an older safe and work towards this again, I'll do so. Otherwise, I think I might just be missing one companion. So that's gonna be sad. But I uh, hope you guys nonetheless enjoyed the episode. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.